What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 254 and we start today's episode off with some good news, uh, Lazari is returning from his injury, uh, he suffered a few weeks ago and he's now returning to the first team which is great, we also saw another training injury occur literally straight after that for another striker, uh, Daniel Atta is going to be out for 9 days with a sprained ankle so not a big deal, he's our lowest rated striker and he's a reserve player at the very best so it's not a big deal for us but even so still not nice to see but good to know Lazari is coming back from his injury and we also have a squad report to start today's episode off as well so you can see how the players are currently doing as we've now entered April so coming towards the close of this career mode now of course this is going to be our final series, uh, season in this series um, a reminder if you didn't see episode number 250 I basically decided to put a poll out in the description of that video and let you guys decide which team we will start the career mode with the next career mode I'll do and if you didn't see the episode go back and watch it um, right now Torino are currently leading the poll but of course that could change and um, yeah it's, it's it's a really interesting thing to let you guys decide the next career mode team during one that's already happening right now but uh, regardless thanks to everyone who's been voting so far and uh, remind you can still vote as the poll won't close until uh, the end of this series. Um, also as well you can see the league table right there, uh, 8 games to go we are 3 points clear of West Bromwich Albion, 6 points clear of Everton and 7 clear of Chelsea so I think all 4 of those teams still have a definite chance of winning the title even though right now you'd say that West Bromwich Albion are our closest opponents which of course they are in terms of the points I'm still not ruling out Chelsea I'm still not ruling out Everton Everton had a great start to the season uh, Chelsea of course a really strong team won the Premier League in real life this year so can't really rule out either of those teams and there you go and we take on Crystal Palace for the first game of today's episode here as Palace travels to the Emirates Stadium to take us on at home and of course as you can see in the league table right now Palace are sitting in 19th place clamber in for points. They've still got nine games to go so still enough time for Pardew's men to get it sorted and survive the drop but of course with us top of the table here having a really impressive home record this season as we usually do in career mode. Usually at home we're really strong in the league. I was definitely fancying my chances coming into the game and the first chance would fall directly from kickoff as well as we had a much changed side out there due to the Champions League uh, quarter final second leg upcoming in midweek against Real Madrid uh, but still the first chance did come to us right from kickoff as uh, we pass the ball forward towards Danny Welbeck here Welbeck takes it around Boateng, keeps holding the ball, keeps on running, then holds it up, takes it around Friars, goes through one on one. Good chance here, but his shot ends up going just wide the post and behind for a goal kick. So still 0 0. Welbeck's first attempt at a game going pretty close. But in the eighth minute here, Crystal Palace have a corner and they cross the ball in. It's not really dealt with. Binham Williams gets it back, takes it around his man and finds Gray down the left hand side. He crosses the ball into the centre and Viola gives Crystal Palace the lead just eight and a half minutes in. And we do have a shock early goal in this game because if anyone's going to score it, you expect it to be us despite us having a weaker side out there but it's Palace who take the lead in this game chipping the ball inside Viola wins the header and Carboni well he made a great save against Real Madrid I thought he had a really good game in midweek but I do believe we should have stopped that one as it was pretty much right at him but it's still Arsenal nil Crystal Palace won the away side taking the early lead in this game here in the 31st minute though you see Danny Welbeck find Gnabry who drills in a cross and if it wasn't for a great save by the goalkeeper it would have been 1-1 really good stop in the centre there and it's still 1-0 to Palace in front of the resulting corner Serge Gnabry crosses the ball in looks for De Vito the Italian wins the header but it's cleared off the line and eventually Palace managed to get the ball away so really good piece of defending there and it's still 1-0 so going into the break we were trailing it was a really disappointing first half from us so in the second half three minutes after the restart I wanted a fast start to this half and a really instant reply if we could get one and we dig so in the 50th minute Danny Welbeck takes it around his man smashes the ball past the goalkeeper and makes it Arsenal 1 Crystal Palace 1 so a really good finish by Danny Welbeck there taking it around his defender and Welbeck is such an underrated striker I've sung his praise as many times since joining Arsenal. He always does really, really well for us when he gets the chance, you know. Like, I'm always confident he's going to put the ball in the back of the net if he gets the opportunity. And he may have missed with the uh, first chance of the game right in the first couple of minutes, but as soon as Welbeck danced his way inside there, I just knew, even though it was on his weaker foot, he was going to find the back of the net, and he did. So Arsenal won, Crystal Palace won, and just like against Real Madrid in the last episode, right from kickoff, they gave the ball away after we'd scored a goal, and we scored another one, and it's exactly the same that happens here. Danny Welbeck intercepts, plays it through towards his strike partner, Odi Bajo, runs through, he slightly uh, rise to slide challenge smash the ball past the goalkeeper and makes it Arsenal 2 Crystal Palace 1 so it's, it's deja vu you know just like the Real Madrid game when Tony Kroos gave the ball away we ran down the right and saw Ronaldo crossed the ball and got a goal from it it's pretty much the exact same thing here they get the ball away Welbeck plays it inside Nodi Bajo runs clear and Jermaine Defoe's regen just another striker we got in this squad who always scores goals whenever he gets chances makes it Arsenal 2 Palace 1 so it's only his first goal in the Premier League because he hasn't played too many Premier League games this year and it is 2 
2-1 to Degano. So we do take the lead in this game for the first time. In the 63rd minute, Palace almost got themselves back on level terms. Hunt finds O'Keefe here, and eventually as we fail to get the ball away, O'Keefe strikes it, but it goes over the bar and behind for a goal kick. So still 2-1, and with 12 minutes to go, we were still in the lead in this game, and we had a great chance to make it 3-1 as Rani Unlu plays it through to us. Scott McLeod off the bench. Our academy graduate finds Vargas. Vargas back to Unlu. Lovely ball inside, but Odibajo can't get his header on target and puts it behind for a goal kick. So still Arsenal 2, Crystal Palace 1. But to be honest, after we got the second goal, they only really had one chance, Crystal Palace, and that was O'Keefe's effort, which went over the bar. Other than that, if anyone was going to score a fourth goal, it looked like it would be us. There was a really great chance for Man Seattle there to make it 3-1. But unfortunately for us, it was a brilliant stop by the goalkeeper as he turned it behind for a corner. So still 2-1, and from the resulting corner, Man Seattle off the bench, crosses the ball in, looks forward to Vito. It's not really dealt by the goalkeeper. It comes to Gnabry, and his shot goes just over the bar and behind for a goal kick. So still Arsenal 2, Crystal Palace 1. And the final chance would fall in stoppage time here as Carboni kicks the ball long. Vargas flicks it on towards McLeod. McLeod cushions it down, takes a couple of touches here, takes it around his man with the fake shot, has space to shoot, does so, but it does go just over the bar and behind for a goal kick. What a lovely goal it would have been for McLeod's first senior goal. But it was how the game would finish though. Arsenal 2, Crystal Palace 1. So we get the job done, we get the three points. Really, really important result that, especially because we were training at half time to go out and score two goals in two in-game minutes, um, you know, after the break, I think it was seven or eight minutes after the restart, you know, to get those two goals that actually won us the game was really, really big for us because those are the games which we can't afford to, you know, to, to slip up in. We have to get the wins in those games because, you know, they're not exactly bankers for us, but we're taking on a relegation threat inside, you know, at home in the Premier League as we're on the home stretch. We've got to get the three points in those games. So a really big result for us, that one. And also as well, a side note, West Brom lost to Everton uh, during that match there as well by two goals to one at home what an, another big boost that is for us there and of course as the season goes on we're going to be keeping a really close eye on those results and those fixtures uh, to see how our opponents do in the upcoming uh, final few games still we take on Real Madrid for the second and final game of today's episode here is Real Madrid come and take us on the Emirates Stadium for the Champions League quarter final second leg of course because we scored three away goals at the Bernabeu in the first leg and the fact we won the game by a single goal I mean coming into this game Real Madrid would have to score at least two goals if they were to get themselves through to the next round. But of course, as Ronaldo scores here in the second minute, it means they're now to score three goals if they're going to get themselves through to the second round, at least three goals as well. Otherwise, we'll be making our way through to the Champions League semi-final because it just had to happen, didn't it? You know, just two and a half minutes in, Cristiano Ronaldo scores against his former club, makes it Arsenal 1, Real Madrid 0. We cross the ball in. Ronaldo's not going to miss that tap in there and he does make it 1-0 to Arsenal as well. And a side note as well, the player that gave the ball away there as Nyang ran clear was Danny Carvajal. He scored an own goal in the game at the Bernabeu. Now he's given the ball away for our first goal of the game. He was not having a good tie as things stood. Uh, we saw a header go just over the bar there and in the 14th minute, Real Madrid almost got themselves back on level terms as Luka Modric goes down the right-hand side, cuts inside and finds James Rodriguez, but it's a really good save by Carboni and we get the ball away. However, as Savanier plays the ball inside here towards Ryan Sai, Dilly Dally's on the ball. It comes towards James Rodriguez, plays it off towards Rodriguez, Atese Rodriguez and Rodriguez makes it Arsenal 1. Real Madrid won. So Real Madrid back on level terms in this game. They would have to score at least uh, two more goals due to the away goal ruling if they were to get themselves through. But a really nice feed there from Rodriguez to Rodriguez. And it is Hesse who makes it Arsenal 1, Real Madrid 1. So Real Madrid back on level terms. In the 41st minute here, they almost took the lead for the first time on the night and in the tie. Hesse Rodriguez, the goal scorer, takes it around. His man he keeps holding the ball, plays it inside towards Karim Benzema, crosses to the far post. Gareth Bale's on the ball. The Welshman crosses the ball in. Kroos knocks it down. And James Rodriguez's header hits the bar and we get the ball away so really unlucky by the Colombian there but it was still 1-1 and to be honest in the second half with Real Madrid still level on the night but behind on aggregate by four goals to three they just didn't do enough and the Spanish side rarely showed any kind of threat to our goal and in the 86 minutes they push too many bodies forward Nian goes forward down the right hand side here takes it around his man smashes the ball towards the goal and you know Chesney the former Arsenal goalkeeper sold him in the summer I, I said in the game at the Bernabeu the reason we got rid of the guy is because he made too many mistakes and I just wasn't confident with him as our number one goalkeeper and you know again you know I know Niang's got shot power and everything but it's right at his near post he seems to have it covered I can't believe we let that one sneak in but it did it's Arsenal 2 Real Madrid 1 but the game and the tie was you know it, the tie was over I couldn't see Real Madrid scoring another two goals in the last five minutes they weren't you know really doing anything in the second half but the game wasn't over it was still neatly balanced at 1-1 but Niang gets us the winner there and does ensure that we are going through to the Champions League semi-finals so delighted with that we were the better side over two legs 
and I'm really pleased that for a second successive Champions League season we have knocked out Real Madrid in the knockout stages and are making our way through to the next round. So we're through to the Champions League semi-finals, delighted with that and we will be taking on Bayern Munich in the semi-finals as well. But that is going to be the episode guys so as always a big thank you for watching the video, really do hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed today's episode of Career Mode then please do leave a like and I will see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.